professor uh, of philosophy uh, at Kolas uh, Vito Tasimagnus University, um, uh, University of Humanities in Kolas, which is second big city in Lithuania. And uh, in Kolas uh, was working uh, uh, a lot uh, as a philosopher, as an activist as well. Uh, with the communities, uh, uh, communities uh, in dissent, uh, communities in rebellion, uh, communities in disobedience, uh, uh, not only in Lithuania but also in Belarus, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, he was working with people in Maidan um, and um, and uh, and many other places. And most recently, uh, his project also unfolds in the northern territories of Russia. Uh, in the territories of the Arctic Circle and above, uh, where he is engaging uh, indigenous people. Um, and himself, Gindotras, was born in those places, in Borkuta, as his family were deported by the totalitarian regime of Stalin. Uh, so he, as a philosopher, also studied philosophy at Moscow Lomonosov University. Um, and uh, as I mentioned now, he is a professor in Kodas. So please join me in welcoming. So, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Now I would like to present uh, some uh, of my ideas, uh, which I was invited uh, by Gidiminas and Nomeda. And actually, when I was invited, I thought uh, about new forms or new strategies of resistance, uh, activist resistance, and how it could be related with the uh, metaphor of Sven. And I take uh, the name of uh, Cool Grinda. You could check uh, on the websites everywhere. This is very original uh, Lithuanian uh, concept, which is uh, completely different from Heidegger's Holzweger. Holzweger means uh, path in forests or uh, traces in forests uh, uh, where this uh, uh, thinker, you know, or groups uh, they are walking and ordinary the metaphor which is uh, interpreted Holzweger is uh, that traces uh, are traces in uh, uh, in uh, sorry, Schwarzwald in, in the mountains of Schwarzwald and uh, who, uh, those who uh, were in uh, these places, you remember this is very, or now it's very portion, you know, this is good. And uh, Kulgrim there looks uh, completely opposite to Holzweger, but it's uh, more or less related. And I uh, discussed and uh, thought a lot uh, how, uh, how to relate, uh, which, what kind of concept I could uh, relate, and uh, I, because I'm working a little bit about uh, philosophy of uh, memory, but uh, mostly occult memory even, uh, or uh, in, uh, in the memory which is don't, uh, uh, what was it, which, which is uh, in, independent from the history and genealogies, and it means I call this memory agnostic or even occult memory. Uh, that is uh, the concept which is not a uh, pleasure for university society. And uh, because not pleasure for universities, as I use them. Uh, uh, and uh, that does, uh, it's so, uh, you see here some kind of uh, first my presentation, uh, what does mean Kulgrinda? Kulgrinda is the road under the swam. And ordinary, it's built on the uh, very special road, a little, little bit explained under the uh, water and the swamp. It means invisible for the foreigners, invisible for the, those who would like to be hegemonic. And what is very important that Pulgrinda always uh, bring, uh, bring to, uh, by the communities, not by the state power, and never was uh, built in Lithuania by the state power. However, we need to understand a little bit uh, who bring the relationship with the SWAM. Um, uh, you know that uh, uh, Jennifer presented a very nice presentation, and I, but I am involved into more about uh, uh, processes of SWAM. There is no SWAM, it's SWAMping. This is process of SWAMping. And uh, in a way, it means that if you will build some 
kind of road under a road uh, of resistance, ordinary, it's only for resistance purposes. Uh, why, when you will build, uh, when you build uh, uh, some road uh, for the resistance purposes, because cement is always under changing. Uh, after some uh, years, you need to rebuild this uh, uh, cool green dirt. It means that uh, differently from the whole swing, you need to rebuild and to rebuild your resistance. It's not about permanent resistance. It's always about changing because uh, cementing. Uh, and uh, here you see that uh, ordinary what's happened with the lakes that they swam and uh, it means that after some uh, period you need to, to uh, again to rebuild and this is very group uh, or even uh, or even individual I try to find uh, some uh, an examples of uh, I try to find examples of some kind of similar culture like Pulgrinda in other countries or the uh, 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 peoples. Uh, however, uh, I, I don't find the exactly the same. Uh, okay, that uh, there are culture of tundra between uh, Nordic uh, peoples and uh, I very like this culture, but it's completely, it's very nomadic and because these uh, groups are not nomadic, they are not interested in the building of cool green dust. Uh, in Russia, I didn't, I spent uh, uh, more than 20 years in Russia, I grew up, and uh, I didn't remember uh, nothing related to the cool green dust, uh, like a culture of them. Uh, there, there are many of events and even legends or some poetics of uh, uh, Svamp uh, in, in Russian language and very nice poetics, I will use even this. Uh, however, it, it, it's not about uh, Pulgrinda. Uh, I, I, uh, and I, uh, it's interesting for me that Lithuania recognized Pulgrinda's national heritage only maybe 10, 15 years ago. Before it, nobody cares about this uh, heritage because it, it, is, it was not pyramids, it's not, it's not uh, even hills, uh, like it's not, was, it was not uh, visible and uh, you know it's not a pleasure for tourist industry. How could you travel uh, the, this under the swamp or completely dirty? Now there, there are some uh, you know, companies which would like to invite to you to go through the cool window. Uh, it means, uh, okay, you are, will be completely uh, dirty, you know, and so on. It's, uh, it's again dangerous because, you know, step to, to one side or to the other side, you could uh, die. And uh, this is uh, not for all of tourists. And uh, for the tourist purposes, they need some uh, some uh, stalkers, uh, but now I would like just say a few words uh, about uh, the significance of this uh, concept. Uh, uh, okay, that Kulgrinda uh, consists from two words. One of them uh, means stone, Ulis, stone, and Grinda is pavement. It's uh, just stone road, but it's not okay. It's wild stone road. It's not uh, like uh, contemporary. Uh, it's like you just uh, put uh, these stones uh, in order to mark and as well to help uh, for your horses and yourself to travel through, through the tens and tens kilometers uh, uh, through the uh, swam. And uh, actually, Fulgrinda uh, became a metaphor in Lithuania, metaphor or some kind of hidden resistance or underwater resistance, a little bit similar to partisan uh, and to guerrilla, but uh, independently from the state regime or dominant regime. Fulgrim, that means that the groups of community resistance, first of all, uh, under aggression of mainstream and hegemonies, and when people to, to invite to, to build some kinds of Fulgrim does in contemporary, it means to build, in Heideggerian sense, hidden, invisible Holzweges, you know, hidden, invisible uh, tra uh, forest traces. And because they are always visible, according to our uh, imaginary, so it's better to build uh, uh, under the swamp. 
And I, I, I think this uh, concept is uh, quite useful and I will try to develop it uh, in the context of uh, our memorial. Uh, but on the other side, we need to use, the, because food in this just throat, and uh, uh, it means that we, uh, that Pugrida, Pugrida presupposed the man who is killed uh, to travel uh, uh, on the Pugrida. And uh, actually, I don't know uh, what kind of data concept we could use except uh, stalker. And uh, that uh, um, brothers, um, okay, that uh, Andrei Tarkovsky uh, did uh, uh, his film uh, following uh, Brothers Trugatsky, uh, who wrote a novel about uh, a Stalker with the title Picnic, which means a little bit uh, different. And uh, 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 as you remember, those who um, uh, watched this film, that uh, the, this it means that Stalker uh, knows that uh, the trace through the zone is always in the changing. You never know uh, that uh, what kind of streams happen, and he always need uh, uh, to research uh, the role when he uh, when he provide some group to achieve some uh, some tasks. The same is about Pugrinda, that uh, you couldn't go uh, by the Pugrinda without uh, this stalker, because uh, that swamp is always under changing, and uh, you know you never know what's happened with the swamp, and even Pugrinda uh, couldn't help you. It's uh, very similar to uh, Star uh, T uh, Tarkovsky interpretation of Stalker's work. It's not just uh, uh, the guy who knows road because uh, uh, road and situation could be changed. That uh, and again, uh, that uh, the other what I would like to involve topic uh, a little bit. To, I, I would like to invite uh, involved. It's uh, about uh, uh, tombs. You know, I, I thought a lot. Uh, I, I, I actually I, I studied not in Saint Pet not in Moscow, but in Saint Petersburg, uh, Leningrad University, and I spent uh, six years uh, near the uh, Smolensk Cemetery. And this cemetery, it's very nice, uh, beautiful, but it was uh, very old and was built on the swamp. Not on the, it's, uh, on the surface of swamp. Actually, they put it a lot of earth, dirt and other materials in order to, uh, to make uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, 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 cemetery more or less civilized. And uh, it's beautiful, but uh, from time to time you could imagine when you uh, uh, make uh, a cave, you always achieve, achieve a water, you know, and you put uh, the, the dead bodies into water. And there, is, uh, the, 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 there are a lot of legions, and when we were students, we always uh, have some uh, fairy tales, uh, you know, that you uh, couldn't go with your girl, uh, okay, because, uh, okay, girl is girl, in any, in any, in any way, who would like to go to uh, the swamp, the, to the cemetery, you couldn't go at midnight, uh, because if you will, uh, will uh, lost, uh, uh, not, uh, because you would like to hide yourself, uh, from the community to kiss some of your lover, you know, it means that you need to go outside from the road, you know. And what happens, uh, sometimes these uh, tombs uh, could be open because, uh, or down because uh, uh, swamp, you know, and you could just uh, down as well uh, in your uh, uh, romantic uh, traveling uh, to the, this uh, Swamp uh, bodies, you know, and it was accepted as the, mo the most dangerous and terrible uh, uh, legions. Maybe even reality sometimes happen. Uh, but I've seen a lot uh, tombs who, uh, which were open because this uh, movement of water on the cemetery, you know? water on the cemetery and streams on the cemetery. And for me, it was always uh, very interesting. Maybe this is the, uh, uh, the possibility for some kind of mystical 
conversation be between dead bodies, you know, because this stream between uh, dead, be be between dead, and this is some kind of mysticism. And uh, I and uh, underst uh, uh, and, uh, understood that this mysticism, in some way, uh, could explain uh, something. Uh, could explain for us something. And uh, first of all, uh, there is uh, mythology that uh, in uh, that the bodies in Sven are torturing uh, because they couldn't uh, rest in peace. You know, because always uh, that uh, 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 this swamp uh, waters, they always uh, uh, touch uh, them and uh, stimulate in some way. And uh, uh, there are actually legions uh, that uh, if the bodies were put it into swamp, they became spectres. They became ghosts, ghosts if you would like. And I, in this sense, uh, remember, uh, re uh, remember actually some um, uh, Jacques Derrida uh, con uh, 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 consideration about spectres of uh, Karl Marx or about ghost. And you remember this, uh, uh, his quote, a specter uh, is or ghost is found in Europe, the specter of communism. But uh, when Derrida did uh, research, he found that Marx used this uh, expression maybe because he quoted Hamlet, uh, Shakespeare Hamlet, the same ghost. It means he, he uh, Marx uh, wrote not just uh, about uh, uh, a metaphor of communism, uh, but about uh, some kind of uh, social relationships which was uh, materialized, or the kill, the proletariat, uh, which uh, now is presented in the form of a uh, ghost. And uh, uh, the ghost uh, pre presents for us a uh, memorial. And these ghosts are not historical, and it's not genealogical. Uh, it means that these ghosts are always present, contemporary. It's our days. Uh, it means that these bodies doesn't exist in history. These bodies are always materialized into con contemporaries. And for me, it's very important that uh, our memory is always, uh, as well, uh, is not in the history and it's not knowing the, uh, 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 in the uh, genealogy. And you remember this uh, uh, actually uh, scheme, which uh, which uh, was taken from many of phenomenologists, and uh, ordinarily they use this scheme in order to explain Edmund Husserl's uh, conception of uh, the our uh, memory. And this scheme presupposes some kind of linear range, or uh, I call it hegemonic range. And uh, it means that this one uh, vertical red line uh, means uh, our present point, present point, and then this present point uh, could be uh, enlarged uh, by the uh, intention, some in intentions uh, about future and uh, or actual or relative intention about uh, for about future. So we could. Uh, some of us uh, intend to uh, actualize uh, to, uh, future for a couple uh, minutes or a couple hours, D depends from our skills, and the same about our memory or the past, and this uh, relative or actual uh, uh, memory and uh, future visions of future, future presents for us uh, contemporary. And this contemporary later could be put it into personal memory, long-term memory, and personal plans, long-term plans. And then everything starts to depend from the history, where different institutions are even, or even state, uh, tries to be, uh, uh, to, to, to have power, and tries to regulate, regulate all this range I mean the state or corporations or capitalism or feudalism, if you would like, would like to uh, regulate all this line, all this range, uh, dependent from the hegemonic history conceptions and hegemonic 
futurologist uh, conception. So uh, if we are involved into this line, we are under control of hegemonic powers, and we even couldn't normally uh, memorize what happened uh, in, the, in the past. For example, because I'm doing uh, many of researches about Gulag, and uh, I, I did and, and I knew and know uh, many of uh, prisoners, uh, I found, uh, uh, similar actually to, for example, Nobel Prize winner uh, Svetlana Alekseevich, she did a very similar researches, that people changed their memory following historical demands. They uh, could uh, uh, memorize uh, their memory about uh, torturers of uh, Gulag depends completely from, from the contemporary uh, hegemonic intentions how to present uh, contemporary history, how to present history. They always uh, remember, many of them remember, in the context, uh, in the context of political demands of, and political correctness. You know, uh, uh, and uh, the, yeah, what, but what you could do in order to remember in political incorrect way, you know, uh, what, how could you remember it? And actually, you could uh, do it uh, by the uh, very individual and high memory to be absolutely alone in your memorial, okay, let's all speak about heroic partisans okay, or, or guerrillas. You, uh, you remember from your fathers and uh, uh, grandfathers that there were not uh, no heroic, you know, no, but very dramatic and traumatic. And for example, some uh, uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn or uh, Shamal or other prisoners of Gulag, they wrote uh, about uh, villainy, villainy and meanness of uh, Gulagian prisoners. And uh, how many, uh, how many, uh, how cruel they were in order to survive. They, they were ready to uh, push down or even kill their neighbors, uh, uh, the other Gulagian prisoners. After liberation, after 20 or 20, when they spent 20, 25 years in Gulag, it's not about concentration camp. Nazi concentration where you could sp spend maximum four years or five years. In the uh, according to Gulagian uh, concept, it's like, you know, holiday. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, after torturing of 20, uh, 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 the, the, the people couldn't even remember openly what's happened in this situation. And they always prefer to remember what was uh, uh, supposed for them to remember, you know, they remember not not their actual experience, but the stories which was produced or intended by the history on political regime, and so they survive in order never never remember what happened in the real or reality of them. And then I found in uh, Giordano Bruna a uh, little sum of schemes, which I discussed uh, later, uh, uh, before I discussed, and today I will discuss them. This is uh, that uh, scheme, uh, which I later explain and will relate with uh, Giordano Bruno, but it's uh, uh, the scheme which I take uh, from, uh, from uh, 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 Giordano Bruno considerations about uh, memory. And Giordano Bruno wrote about uh, multiplicity of worlds, and he used this strange uh, Renaissance language where planets like Sun or Mercury or Jupiter uh, exist not only outside of us, but inside of us as well, like microcosmos and uh, uh, macrocosmos. And uh, uh, the same language was used by many of other uh, Renatian thinkers, for example, Paracelsus used completely the same language, that, uh, for example, uh, iron is outside and inside of us, and see, this is the, about uh, correspondences of microcosmos and macrocosmos. So, uh, these worlds uh, are not in the history, and these circles which I presented for you, 
means uh, events, some kind of very important our events. And these events have some kind of our memorial relationships or traces. And uh, these black lines under the, uh, uh, under the, uh, uh, these traces and circles means history and uh, or hegemonic power, hegemonic power. Hegemonic power always try to negate our individual memory of the most significant events. And uh, we could uh, break these small lines or traces of relationships and we lost, in this case we will lost, our memory of individual, uh, existential in, in, and individual, or we, will, we could resist uh, to the to the uh, 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 hegemonic powers, to the history, but in order to resist, uh, this is my invention of Kulgrinda, we need just to build some kind of hidden ways or hidden roads where not only I am, but as well together with the different uh, people, we could uh, walk like uh, guerrillas, you know, to memorize, to remember, to remember what is forbidden to remember. Uh, what is forbidden to remember. And uh, that, that, what we remember, and what is forbidden uh, uh, to remember, uh, is not history, and uh, is not included in the history, and couldn't be uh, Considered in the context of, in the history, it's not historical. It's always contemporary. It's always contemporary, and uh, uh, this is uh, completely different, as you see, from the understanding of the time from the phenomenological point of view. And uh, what does it mean these circles? The circles are not the just abstract, but they call them pulsars. From I take this concept from. Uh, astronomy, as astrophysics, pulsars. Pulsars, it, they are full of energy, and we, uh, uh, all these uh, events are related between themselves uh, by the ener our en uh, emotional and emotional energy. That it means that because they are always contemporary, these pulsars could start to be more intensive or less intensive. We more remember what's happened dramatically, even where sometimes we need to go to uh, the uh, psychoanalytics to tell them what's happened. I think this is uh, not always correct uh, behavior. Uh, to go, uh, it's not therapy, it's political. And uh, if you think that it's therapy, uh, you lost your uh, political uh, resistance you start to be occupied, you know. In order not to be occupied, you need to, to save and to, uh, to experience the power of these pulsars fully, you know. Not to ask, help me, uh, uh, you know, to, for, to forbid, what, not to, to forget, to forget, sorry, to forget what's happened, but to intensify what's happened not to be less paranoid and schizophrenic, schizophrenic, but to be more schizophrenic in this sense. <laughs> to be more schizophrenic. And this is why these pulsars are so important. This is not abstraction of, but some energetic, uh, energetic centers. And the event never happened in the past event. Uh, event is always contemporary in, involved in our our in, in, in our in, in our life they are always presented as a ghost you know of uh, these uh, cemeteries you know that you meet and meet them again and again and uh, that the reason is not uh, to escape from this ghost but to give them more blood you know just to pre to be presented uh, because it's not history. If you will uh, forbid, if you will abandon them, it means that you enter to the hegemonic history, you lost your own memory and your roads, you know, and you agree to follow this uh, 
uh, you know, uh, roads of hegemonic uh, power. However, in this sense, I start to think one, what does mean environment of these uh, events. And uh, I take uh, then uh, the concept of uh, a swam. Uh, this is environment, it's like plasma of our uh, neurons in our brain, you know. This is sometimes this plasma is uh, passive, and sometimes this plasma could be very active. This plasma means everyday life. Or, uh, or uh, our relationships, uh, which could be, uh, again, poisoned or uh, uh, ecological, or, or more, more, more or less ecological. This is uh, why this is uh, so uh, uh, and important. And then this plasma or uh, SVAM could be interpreted as the body without organs, without organs, uh, and uh, this is as well uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, quite, uh, if you would, quite dialectical uh, contradiction between, like between neurons and plasma, and there is between our events, which we remember, and about our uh, contemporaneous, uh, contemporary. And uh, in order to, but uh, how is it uh, related with Giordano Bruno? Giordano Bruno uh, did many of schemes. Uh, he just played, I would say, uh, it's approximately uh, uh, 1588, uh, 1590, uh, in this period, late period. He started, at the beginning of his career, uh, Giordano Bruno wrote a uh, uh, few books of Ars uh, Memoria, Arts of memory, but these books were mostly uh, developed. Uh, in these books, he he developed uh, mostly ideas of Raymond Lully, some hermeticism, and uh, was not very original. Later, when he started to wrote uh, the, his uh, major uh, books like uh, Deli Eroici uh, uh, Furori, he he started uh, rethink his concepts of uh, the art of memory and uh, made a lot of uh, very special schemes, uh, very special schemes. And I think that the next scheme even uh, better to understand, because um, if you will look on this uh, scheme of circles and squares, it's like a completely postmodern picture, you know, you never could concentrate where you see square or where you see uh, circle or where you see strange triangles or even different uh, uh, figures and uh, this is the picture how uh, uh, Giordano Bruno imagined what does mean memory this is memory this is our memory you never know what you see you never know uh, what, what is exactly and uh, who's play whom who's play whom uh, you know, and for him, uh, the most important was not, uh, according to him, the most important uh, was not circles and squares. For him, the most important was the figures, what happened between of them. Between of them. Because uh, this is uh, the places uh, where you could be original where you could be original, and uh, if you would like, it, this is uh, that uh, places which not depend from no one power. It's outside, outside of, <laughs> in this time, outside of regulation of inquisition. At the beginning, Giordano Bruno followed uh, that uh, philosopher Nicholas uh, from Cusa, and uh, uh, Cusa uh, uh, did a lot of similar considerations about triangles and, in, in, and infinity or circles in infinity, but he never thought what is between circles or following Giordano Bruno language, what is between walls, what is between walls. And that Later, I will explain that he found that what is in between walls needs some kind of creative working, walking, or 
in my interpretation, some stalker's uh, idea, but he never used the, the concept of stalker. He used the other, the hero or uh, of Eroichi Furori. This is different. The hero of Eroichi Furori, he is independent from all churches and states. He considered himself as a, this hero of Eroichi, who always on the traveling, and never depends from no one tradition. And he would like to develop it, and he called it occult memory. Occult memory. I a little bit interpret this occult memory, maybe in right, maybe wrong uh, uh, way, uh, uh, if you compare with Giordano Bruna. Uh, but, uh, you know, Giordano Bruna never talked about evils, you know, or uh, that uh, our memory depends from the power or inspiration of the evil or Lucifer. No, it's, uh, he was uh, very involved in uh, his time scientific approach uh, to the world. You know, what does mean the, this mean? A code. This is the other picture. Uh, again, uh, this is, he did a lot of such kind of pictures. Some contemporary artists, like for example Giuseppe Zavola from Napoli, he, very he is very inspired by these pictures and he made, he made a lot of uh, his own interpretations. His own interpretations. And uh, you see this uh, that, uh, uh, portrait of, uh, some, uh, of a woman uh, on the, near the, the picture uh, which, was, which was taken from and developed from Giordano Bruno. And I start to think that uh, we could interpret uh, our Sven in some kind, uh, his one way. That's uh, uh, Giuseppe's uh, uh, interpretation of uh, Giordano Bruno's schemes, this artistic interpretation. I think it uh, could be accepted because this Sven is not just Sven, but as well many of our artistic or independent creative interpretations of the events. Of the events, and for example, we could uh, I, I tried even uh, follow and to develop what what kind of what when, when Giordano Bruno spent uh, seven years in uh, Roma uh, 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 Inquisition jail and the torturing, uh, and because he had phenomenal uh, memory, and he could learn per few hours full book of Aristotle. You know that's. Just, phenomenal memory, I think that I started to think that he remember, he could even remember full of books in the jail and to write these books. Later, I, today I will not talk uh, about, uh, I, I searched uh, a lot of experience who tried to, to do the same and is it some kind of uh, uh, the same practice? And I found in a uh, uh, Solzhenitsyn book, Archipelago Lago, that some prisoners were spent not seven years, but 20 years in Gulag. They learned how to remember, not, not only how to remember the book, full book, but how to write books in your memory, you know, and how to write verses in memory and how to find the, and how to create library between prisoners. Because, for example, if you write your 300 pages book in your memory, you know, if somebody will kill you, you know, in this prisoner, how could you save your uh, book? And they developed even system that some, the other prisoners for their food, you know, they will agree to remember, for example, 50 pages of you would like some 20,000 words. Okay, if you pay, okay, I will remember, I will be like your bookshelf, you know. Uh, agree. It's, and they develop special technique to remember this one. And uh, so I interpret that Giordano Bruno did the same when he was in prison, because he was developed. And he has the, his major concept of all his philosophies related to the memory, to the memory. So uh, I start to think which, which kind of events, first of all, he uh, should, uh, he could remember. 
and uh, the, the, there are some uh, uh, some his okay I, he mentioned before he be, uh, he was uh, uh, put it into prison he remember he wrote a little bit what he could remember it, that such kind of, uh, of situation could happen and he tell that first of all he will remember Nola his uh, Nola where he was born it means that uh, he will remember everything about Nola. This is one circle. The other side of the circle actually is Napoli, where he was student and uh, became a uh, monk, and, uh, and, uh, that, uh, and where he created the first uh, uh, his uh, mythological ideas. Mythology. London, it's his uh, love place, you know, he wrote the best and the uh, uh, major books in London. Venice is the place where he was arrested. It's not the best uh, uh, memory for him because uh, he was treated by Venice power and uh, uh, sent it to Roma. And actually the last one should be uh, uh, Roma Inquisition and the uh, memory of uh, different jails. He uh, was put it in two different jails. And he always on the bench of river, uh, all of these jails, and he always could see some uh, events on the bridge of angels, because he always met. So it's, we could even rebuild what he saw and how he could include everything what he saw into his previous circles and so this is my idea we could even reconstruct some pages of the book which was never written by the hand only in his memory that is my idea how to read books which was never written by hand that's only in memory would we do the same if we will use the same mythology Occult memory. What does mean this occult memory on my uh, interpretation? And uh, maybe uh, Giordano Bruno. First of all, uh, uh, occult uh, of memorial uh, uh, events as uh, the energetic centers of our, uh, our life, our existential life. And uh, uh, Giordano Bruno interpreted it uh, like uh, some kind of form of Gnosticism. Why Gnosticism, this concept, it's useful? Because Gnosis means, first of all, you mean, remember from Gnosticism, is secret knowledge or se secret way of knowledge. This is why uh, Gnosticism. And uh, it's as well related with some, uh, cr our creativity, because uh, creativity helps to remember our major events or mystical e events. And William Blake, Blake and Chesot Miller, uh, they little bit developed some of ideas of them. But uh, first of all, uh, occult memory means uh, for me, uh, for, for me, uh, cultivation of memory. And I found some uh, Max Stirner uh, 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 expressions of uh, Max Stirner about uh, that. Uh, he imagined how to build as well, independent from the state, the church, and the hegemonic power, our memory, and try to find uh, as well how to learn, how to develop. And uh, but he mostly uh, emphasized uh, his uh, uh, egoistic, uh, egoistic, uh, uh, egoistic approach. But in any way, these egoistic are very important because uh, egoistic in his sense. The only egoistic guy who loves his ownness could find necessary power or uh, inspiration to remember in the contrast to history. Uh, uh, as well, a little bit about imposters and, uh, uh, and uh, this is mistake, imposters and stalkers of uh, memorial events. Imposters. Uh, uh, like Saint Germain or uh, Casanova or, or these guys who are always on the traveling and they are lying about everything and for, for me this is again challenge because until now 
I presuppose that there is conflict only two, history hegemony and our memory were put save our experiences, but uh, there is third element, imposters, who lies, you know, about everything and who didn't experience any significant events when they are talking about what they are talking about, like Saint Germain, who again related with uh, with Venice. He tell sometimes that now he is uh, fifty five hundred years old. You know, he spent five hundred years in the other situation. He tell that three hundred. Uh, and nobody knows exactly uh, where where he was born, but exactly, but it's clear when he uh, he uh, died. Uh, that uh, imposters, why they are important uh, here? Because they like, uh, you know, uh, they try to use uh, weakness of history. You know, they they lie about their real participants of Second World War. This is, you know, the artificial generals, you know. Uh, uh, Russians call this one, that these uh, people who never was in war, they present themselves like, you know, uh, like uh, 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 participants of uh, war events or revolutionary events or different, but they are important as well. They are important as well because they show weakness of both situation and our individual memory, because they could lie, and the weakness of history, as well because they would like to present themselves as a major element of history. Uh, and uh, they are parasites, some kind of parasite, but I consider them in positive way. These parasites need to destroy history. You know, these liars are the best uh, 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 who destroy all si political significance of, of histo historical, of historical. And uh, from the other side, it's not so important, is it, uh, when we are talking about our existential memory, if it is really existential, it's not very important, is it true or not? Because we cultivate it, it's not about uh, correspondence to reality, it's not about truth, it's about existential centers of our life. These uh, events, should, they, it's, there is no necessity to correspond to some political reality, because political is involved into history as well. So, or, I try to search about people without history. And how do they remember everything? People without history. And uh, again, my research is about Nordic, uh, uh, it's uh, Arctic peoples, Arctic peoples, shows that it's very interesting. For example, contemporary Nienets, uh, Nienets, uh, it's a uh, uh, small uh, nation, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in North Ural and uh, Tundra areas, uh, nomadic, I, I try to find how do they, uh, okay, now I'm more or less free from the st Russian state because nobody cares about this Tundra. And, uh, okay, they send their children to school only maximum for four years. They, uh, they explain, we don't need to know your, know your stories, know your political. We have our own memory. And uh, when we're asking what they uh, remember, they remember is exactly not the historical events. They remember actually father, grandfather, in which, the, and, and how they are involved in the mythological. Uh, this memory exists in some like, like in, in the Sven, like in Tundra, in some mythological context. Con context. And uh, do they need uh, this history? Do they need, uh, do they need uh, genealogy? 
in Michel Foucault or uh, Friedrich Nietzsche sense. No, they don't. Uh, original, if you take, uh, for example, many of the books of books of uh, original civilization, many of uh, they of them will write that uh, these people, you know, un they are not civilized. It's uh, like we need to criticize them. We need we have to show them how to be involved in the history, in the political, you know, in the civilized uh, way. Okay, you could interpret in this one. But for me, much more important question is what kind of possibilities we could get from this indigenous uh, ahistorical people? Uh, what, what they could, how could they help us? And I started to imagine that Lithuanians who built Kulgrinda in medieval ages and beginning of Renaissance, they were outside of history as well. They were not just outside of history, they resist the history because uh, crusaders or uh, Christians went to Baltic uh, uh, or Lithuanian uh, lands and they tried to resist. How could they explain to each other their resistance if they never used historical or political language? How could explain we to each other why we need to resist to capitalism and not to use the history of capitalism at the same time. This is very conceptual on my point, a uh, question about our discourse and uh, the, the power of discourse. And my explanation, they use maybe some kind, the same narratives like these Arctic peoples, you know, who try to resist the hegemonic power of Putin and all globalization, you know, through development of these memorial circles, you know, and trace between them and accumulate memory, which is, which is not depend from the political regimes and is based on, if you would like, on mythological, where ghosts are presented equally, equally uh, as uh, live uh, people. Yesterday, I, we, I, we, those who remember, was uh, we, we uh, watched film about uh, resistance of some Africa uh, people who as well didn't use uh, no civilizational, no uh, historical narratives and they tried to resist by using of ecological ghost stories which are completely coincide with their own events memory and they couldn't even separate them for me, this is the example, example about our memorial which exists in span of, uh, uh, of myth, you know, which is always present, which is never involved into any range and lines, you know, and, this is, and, and they could present for us significant elements of existential resistance not to be sublime or not to be regulated. Okay, just enough. Thanks a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, that was uh, an impressive talk um, uh, in Mekistan uh, and uh, very thought provoking. So, uh, um, first, I mean, there are so many things I, I wanted to uh, elaborate on, but first of all, I think that. Uh, that uh, there is a clear link between your presentation of that of uh, uh, Kiara's uh, because of uh, an imaginal element, as I can see it, and you can bring it to Kiara's work, as well as on the tradition of an imaginal, in, in this, um, uh, I would say, a different regime of images that are present in all the Renaissance and all tradition, and during Dragon is only one of them. Uh, with Julio Tobia and yeah. the African Anamoria, uh, where we find this clear structure uh, to, me to memorize mythological structure, to a cold structure, hermetical structure, to memorize what has not happened to you. Basically, to, memor to go beyond the individuality uh, through uh, the spectacle of memory. It's, it's, it's a spectacle of memory, uh, but 
which is not present in, in the uh, you know, uh, discourse of political power in the official history. So uh, this is one just remark, uh, you know, linked to uh, uh, your, your uh, presentation. But also, uh, the other thing that came up uh, while I was listening to you was uh, Pierre Cuyghe, a famous French artist, and his work, uh, Third Memory. Uh, many of you might be aware of it. And, uh, and this uh, and this is a, a story, uh, you know, uh, uh, of a uh, uh, film Dog Day Afternoon, uh, uh, which is based on the story of uh, a certain character, a certain a real person, which is uh, who is Boybovich, a certain Boybovich who breaks into the bank uh, because of his personal problems and. And the story became very important and known in the States. And afterwards, uh, it was interpreted by Sidney Blumet, and it turned out to be a very successful movie. But then, Boykovich resisted. Uh, he came to even try to, to you know, sue them and say that, that that was not my story. Uh, it, my story was told in a way that it would you know, win some, uh, uh, some Grammys and, uh, and Oscars. And in fact, it, it, it did want uh, you know, the film, uh, but uh, the personal story was very different. And uh, he agreed, offered an opportunity to uh, basically retell that story once again. However, uh, uh, and he filmed it, part of what he really observed was that uh, Boykovich was uh, recreating the elements of the film. So similar to, the, uh, to that, um, uh, to my things that we were telling about uh, uh, the memory of black survivors, yeah. you know, you basically recreate official power discourse, yeah. uh, and you cannot do anything with that. You know, so basically, you uh, you need to extract yourself out of uh, out of that history, official history, be a historical, you know, to remember. So I, I think that's a very powerful idea, and that's a, maybe it should be conceived as imaginal idea, maybe. Uh, as well, uh, in terms of uh, uh, use of also of a certain energy, and uh, uh, and that's why you know imagination becomes important here, uh, putting together also in the perspective uh, indigenous uh, imagination. It came up uh, to my mind. I'm wrapping up. Sorry for being that long. Uh, uh, about you know uh, indigenous people, Kali people who are uh, who live in Sierra Nevada in Colombia. And they have this a very similar take on, on the memory and the uh, history and imagination. So basically what they do, they have this practice of uh, uh, their priests uh, secluding themselves uh, at the age of two or three. So basically they take kids and then bring them to, to some uh, uh, cave and they do not show anything real in the life of the sun for nine years. So that's how you become a priest indigenous priests from Hopi people, uh, not seeing anything. You know? So basically living, as they say, in the world of imagination. And they are the only survivors of uh, those who encountered uh, uh, Spanish people, and basically they see themselves in the mountains, so they know that Spanish exists, and sometimes they come into contact, but they never use uh, a written uh, language. They remain you know, outside of the history or in oral culture. And with that, the imaginary, certain imaginary of their own, or imaginal of their own. Uh, and it turns out very interesting that now they have a different kind of knowledge because they come back sometimes in contact and say, there is some ecological crisis going on there. Because we feel without you know, our priests, our bodies, through that imaginal uh, encounter, mythological encounter, we can enter certain layers, uh, geo layers. Uh, or layers of uh, air and water, and we can see that there are changes in the perception, or they even can interpret astrology, astronomical movements, uh, which are accessible to Westerners only through uh, certain technological tools for them. They can see more in the sky than uh, we can. You know? uh, so basically, I thought that, you know, uh, uh, that this link between a certain kind of um, power of the national which is present within the memory could be an interesting uh, uh, an 
interesting bridge in your presentation. Thank you uh, for your uh, comment. Actually, uh, okay, it, you 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 quite helped me. I, I agree about uh, this one uh, that uh, what I presented could be interpreted in the context of the imaginary and the imaginal, which uh, I full, fully agree about it. It's uh, not always uh, just only clear there is uh, this imaginary and uh, there is uh, imaginal in this uh, sense, uh, but uh, I, I'm sure that we could uh, uh, separate in some way. Uh, you mentioned that then uh, astrology, uh, which is uh, again a very interesting uh, example, because astrology is, ordi is uh, ordinary interpreted in the sense uh, of astronomy, uh, which is on my uh, point is a, a very very uh, 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 big uh, mistake. Uh, uh, astrology is not about astronomy. Uh, uh, astrology is about our emotions and uh, that uh, even astrology used the concept of uh, black moon, you know, uh, uh, different uh, ephemerias which doesn't exist in our cosmos, but they need to, to explain how they collect uh, our emotions. But mostly what is important here that astrology is related with some schematic uh, way with all mythology with the whole mythology, differently from astronomy, which is not related to mythology, and astronomy couldn't help for us to remember some uh, no significant events, no nothing. You know, this is empty box, uh, what does mean astro astronomy, and astrology is full of mythology, and astrology is outside of history, and uh, as well, like uh, the other mythologists, and so there are many of astrological uh, organizations would like, I don't like to use the concept of system and uh, or Chinese astrology, you know, or uh, 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 Inks uh, 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 astrology or uh, different, uh, different sorts of uh, uh, European astrologists and when Giordano Bruno started to develop his uh, uh, philosophy he started from the interpretation of astrological symbols. I see in your interpretation one contradiction which is useful for me, and I use the same contradiction, I use the concept contradiction in the electrical way, it's not critique, it's positive. You know? <laughs> and uh, to find contradictions means to find something uh, liar. And uh, on, on my opinion, uh, it's always about uh, because what I'm talking is very emotional and existential, but from the other side, the people who use this one, uh, okay, uh, school of memory, they use the same for the technical memory. Just means to remember book or to remember the events which not, never happened with them. Just technical to, to information to remember some information, uh, to remember some information. But uh, what they are doing with this information, uh, they are putting this information differently from us, not into historical context, but they are put this information into their mythological and cult or occult context. And they cultivate in occult way our information, you know. This is, uh, uh, looks for us some kind of strange how they interpret natives, indigenous, our historical uh, events. It's very interesting for me to read, for example, contemporary educated indigenous who interpret uh, a cultural and social anthropologists, what they did with them, you know, and say, okay, you, you are not involved in all this uh, mythology, thank you that you helped wake up us, you know, and now we will uh, do better. And uh, uh, and again, uh, uh, again, we. Uh, I don't like to say that history and civilization and technical is something wrong, or completely wrong. I, I would say that uh, what does mean this uh, one uh, occult uh, memory or existential memory? It means the possibility when we need, or at least to try to develop 
different, uh, you know, uh, 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 not no just different memorial. On my on my sense, it is to develop different worlds, live worlds. <laughs>